Hello everyone. Today we will talk about character rotation in animation. I will show a few methods that I most often use in my work. There is already a video on the channel with the method of honest rotation, using this dog as an example. But this approach is quite complex and takes a lot of time to implement. Today we will discuss simpler and faster methods of rotation. Here are a few examples, and the rotation itself will take you no more than an hour. Unlike the dog, whose rotation took me the whole day. But it should be noted that this option is suitable for sharper and more dynamic rotations. Unlike the dog, which can be rotated more slowly and smoothly. In general, let me show you, using Dracula as an example, how I implemented this rotation. And you can choose for yourself the option you like the most. So, the basis of this character's rotation. These are three intermediate frames that I drew in Photoshop. It sounds complicated, especially for those who are not used to drawing. But, in reality, there's nothing to be afraid of here. For such angles, you absolutely don't need artistic skills. Here, we just slightly refine an already finished character. And anyone who has the desire can easily and without much difficulty draw these three intermediate frames. Because they are blurred and not detailed, we can significantly reduce them, and they won't take up much space on the texture. In general, the method works, and in practice I've tested it many times. I'll show you how to quickly draw the necessary angles. First, we need a side view of the character. For this, I cut out the head with the lasso tool onto a new layer and removed the left side of the face. Then, using the liquify tool, I deform the shape of the head to get a clearer profile. Then, with a large brush, I draw the back of the head on a new layer and I cut out pieces of hair again using the lasso tool and transform them to give the desired shape. Next, I roughly sketch the silhouette of the neck and add hair strokes on the top of the head. And finally, I take the smooth tool to smooth out the strokes and achieve an even and neat shape. Essentially, with this smudging, we accomplish most of the work. We don't need to strive for detailed work at this stage. We do it as it comes and don't spend time on precise drawing. Once the head is ready, we move on to the body. Here we do the same thing. We remove the left half and then use transformation to shape the figure into a profile. Next, we roughly add the back with a brush and use the smudging tool again to smooth out the strokes on the jacket. In the end, I merged the head and body into one layer, and I slightly adjusted the overall shape of the character using the liquify tool. When everything is ready, we go to the motion blur section and apply blur to the entire character layer to add a speed effect to our rotation. As a result, this is how my first frame of the animation looks, and we can move on to the second angle. Here, I won't focus on and repeat the same thing as the process is similar. Everything is shown in fast-forward mode here. The principle is the same. Each angle took me about 10 minutes, so all three frames can be done in half an hour. Then I simply mirror them and we get a full 360-degree rotation of the character. If you want, you can spend more time and work out all the frames in detail. But in a quick rotation, like in my video, that would be unnecessary. Our brain handles such moments well and will fill in whatever is missing. Therefore, the level of detail we achieved will be quite sufficient. What else can I advise? After all the frames are done, you can highlight certain details with color. This will help. Direct the viewer's attention and make it easier to perceive during quick frame changes. For example, I specifically highlighted the bright elements of clothing, this collar, shirt and tie, to more clearly track the rotation and movement of these details. I did the same on the head. I emphasized the ear, nose, eye and eyebrow with color. This way it will be much easier for the viewer to catch and remember these accents. In the end, the character's turn. In spine took me 11 frames, from 67 to 78. Part of the rotation is achieved through the configured 
3D effect for the face, but the main part consists of the angles we have, now manually drawn. These frames can be placed one after another, or with a frame in between. I do not recommend making larger gaps because it will be noticeable. Jumps will appear. If you need a slower and smoother turn, it's better to spend a little more time and draw a few more intermediate frames. Also, in Spine I added scaling and a small jump to the character during the rotation. This adds dynamics and hides the moment of frame switching. Regarding this method, I can add that you should not forget about the possibilities of neural networks. For example, here are the angles I generated using stable diffusion for the character Pocahontas. I did this a year and a half ago for a video about neural networks. So these images can quite well be used for rotation too. But I can say from my experience that the process of generating such frames takes about as much time as manual drawing. Because such necessary images rarely come out right the first time. Although I haven't worked with neural networks for a long time, perhaps now everything is much clearer and faster. That's all I wanted to say about the method with intermediate frames. Now let's move on to the next option. I have prepared a couple of examples. This method is based on distorting the character's mesh. It takes a bit more time than the previous one, but the animation turns out to be smoother. This method is not suitable for complex characters, but in certain situations it works perfectly. I'll show you in more detail, using this bird as an example. The character came to me almost as a single layer. Only the wing, the beak, and the pupils were separate. To achieve this rotation, I broke it down into uh, separate objects. The eyes, legs, tail, as well as these yellow and blue parts of the body. Under the yellow area, I generated these blue feathers using new Photoshop tools, and it turned out quite well. In Spine, I converted all the elements into a mesh. And essentially, the rotation is implemented by distorting the mesh, the yellow and blue parts of the body. Here you can clearly see how I deform the feather mesh. The eyes, beak, tail and wing are distorted in a similar manner. The main challenge of this method is to properly break down the character into separate elements in advance and move them synchronously. This bottle was made in the same way. Here you can clearly see how I divided it into parts and then sequentially activate different layers. Since this was a secondary character, it came to me drawn on a single layer. Here is its static form. It took quite a bit of time to separate everything into individual elements and then carefully twist this jar. This also includes the rotation of this cactus. Here, the rotation is also implemented through mesh distortion, but this method is slightly different due to the repeating segments. Here, we only need to deform the mesh within this one sector and then simply loop the entire movement. You can see more uh, uh, details about this approach in another video where I rotated the diamond with an acorn. Everything is more detailed there. Here, I just mentioned this method to gather information in one place. Basically, that's all I wanted to say. On the screen now are all the methods I use for rotating characters. This is uh, the honest 3D option. This is the frame substitution method. Here, it's just mesh distortion DD to simulate rotation. This is the method of cyclic hook uh, movement within one sector. And here, I also added the rotation of round objects like a globe and the morphing method. I talked about them in my other videos and I'll leave all the links in the description. Choose any method you like the most. Because often it happens that you can't come up with anything. And when there are no ideas, the best way is just to take and spin the object. And in 90% of cases, that's enough. And this method works. That's all I wanted to say for today. And thank you all for your attention.